Happy Record Store Day, Black Friday list day, everybody. I'm Matt from Too Many Records, and every year I usually do a video talking about the list for Record Store Day and Record Store Day Black Friday. If you don't know what either of those are, I'll give you a really quick summation, because uh, not all of you are veterans of the hobby. It is a day where there is a special list that comes out, and on that day, your local store can order titles uh, from this list. And this list is consisting of titles that are coming out specifically for this day. Now, in the past, this has often been used to repress things that are long out of print or put things on vinyl for the first time. Pretty exciting things that are limited and people tend to line up at their local stores, sometimes as much as 12 hours in advance to try to get the titles that they want because not every store gets allocated the total amount they want because there's only so many to go around. So it's a day to celebrate your local record store. And for me, that's kind of what it is these days, is a day to really appreciate your local record store and go support it, uh, whether you buy a Record Store Day list title or not. The list itself, for the past few years, has been a bit underwhelming. And if you go to my videos from years ago, 2016, 17, 18, when I used to do them back at Amoeba Hollywood, you would see the excitement and the fervor in, in me and in the people in line, and it was palpable and it was exciting. And since 2019, maybe 2020, it feels like there's been something missing. And when I looked at this list, I was really, really hoping, really hoping I would have a video that I was like, this is an amazing list, we're back. But the two words that come to mind are uninspired and underwhelming. And it's a bummer, I don't want it to be that way, but the list is chock full of remixes that no one really asked for, live albums that are not really iconic live performances by any means, represses of albums that are pretty readily available, and a bunch of other complete misses to me. Honestly, at this point, Record Store Day has completely lost the plot. And I think maybe I should do a video soon with my thoughts on how we can restore Record Store Day to its former glory, but right now this video is going to focus specifically on the list and I'm going to do my usual good, bad, and ugly rundown from my first impression. So I'd love to hear in the comments what you think about the list, what you're excited for or not excited for, and uh, let's chat about it. But for now, I'm going to give you a rundown. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, I would love for you to do so. You can click the button below and you can also hit the little bell to turn on notifications. I have about 450 videos before this and maybe another 450 in me, who knows. First up, we have Terry Callier. Terry is an amazing soul jazz musician who has a ton of records. Many are hard to find. Speak Your Peace is coming out, which has one pressing from before that isn't absurdly hard to find, but definitely out of print. So very cool to get more Terry stuff on vinyl. His catalog is pretty fantastic front to back and definitely worth your attention. This is a first run of a thousand though, so don't feel like you're pressured to grab it right now. Now, I should also take a moment to mention that there are differences between RSD firsts and exclusives. First means that it's probably gonna get a run down the road, maybe a different variant. You don't really know how that's gonna pan out. And exclusive means it's specifically for RSD, although I have seen RSD exclusives get represses, so I still, to this day, don't fully understand how that works. Another exclusive is Matt Cameron's Gory Scorch Cretans. This is a EP that Matt Cameron, the famous drummer from Pearl Jam and Soundgarden, Temple of the Dog, all these amazing projects has done as a solo project, collaborating with members of the Melvins, which is really cool. So kind of curious how this one sounds. Goody Mob's Soul Food, a Southern hip hop classic featuring both Andre 3000 and Big Boy is getting a repress. I think this is a pretty good one on the list, probably on the top three releases, I would say. Although there are some presses prior to this that are not unobtainable. Gil Scott Heron and Brian Jackson, Winter in America, another excellent release by the legendary Gil Scott Heron, much like Terry, who I mentioned before, a pretty flawless catalog for the most part, worth listening to everything. There are a few represses of this over the years, but it is probably technically out of print and not super easy to find. Who knows what they're gonna price this at? It's funny, cause like RSD prices are climbing up so high cause the price of all records are getting higher. It's almost like, does it make sense just to plunk down for an earlier press at that point rather than, you know, get the overpriced repress? I don't know. Another exclusive is Rilo Kylie's Under the Black Light. A little over 5,000 copies that are being pressed. It hasn't been in print since 2007. This is not necessarily one of their crowning jewels in their catalog. It's not one of their absolute necessary records, but it is a solid album and it is pretty sought after. So uh, cool that they're doing a repress of it. Nas I Am Autobiography. So this is a extended version of I Am. It existed in various bootlegs over the years. Um, the extra tracks in there are actually quite good. So it's cool that this is getting a official vinyl release. 
Another exclusive is Shotgun Willie, 50th Anniversary Edition. Shotgun Willie is an amazing Willie Nelson record. You can get a Bottle Me Please variant. The original press is kind of hard to find in good condition for cheap, so a deluxe version with extra songs is fairly welcome. Turnstile and Bad Bad Not Good, new heart designs. It's basically Turnstile collaborating with the modern jazz legends Bad Bad Not Good to do reworks of three songs from Turnstile's amazing Glow On record. So this is cool. Uh, do I think it needs its own EP that'll get a lot of play? Probably not. I'd like to hear the songs, but again, this is something that's like cool in concept, probably won't get a ton of spin time. And then RSD exclusive is the Judgment Night soundtrack, which is a really cool collaboration of hip hop and rock artists. This is a very well-respected soundtrack that, again, isn't impossible to find in earlier pressing, but now you can get a, another color variant for slightly cheaper. Can you sense the enthusiasm in my voice? Now let's talk about the bad. The Beach Boys Christmas album, 7,000 copies on green vinyl. Now, while that's cute and all, why, why? Like, it's so easy to get a copy of the Beach Boys Christmas album. It is not a hard record to find. It is a very cheap record to find. So this is just like a weird manufactured collectible that is just clogging up the plants, and I don't know, only the most extreme of Beach Boys fans would probably want this to begin with. And then a De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising 7-inch box set. Now, that's an amazing album. Uh, it finally got a mass repress recently, so basically everybody who wanted that record now has it because it got a pretty huge pressing not that long ago. 7-inch box sets are the bane of my collector existence. No one wants them. I can't think of one person that goes, man, I love listening to my 7-inch box set. And I can think of a few people who say, man, I love owning my 7-inch box set. It is just such a pointless way to own a record. No one wants to flip a disc 14 times to hear a full album. It's just, it's literally just to sit there on your shelf. And I, what? Why? And then I have one ugly, which is actually an album I'm kind of excited for, but the process and how we're getting it is the ugly part. So we have Linkin Park's Lost Demos. This is a bunch of tracks that were demos or almost finished tracks from the pre-Meteora sessions, which is still when they were firing on all cylinders as a band. This is cool. I'll probably try to grab this because I think that's a great era, but what irks me is that this only existed before as a CD as part of their super deluxe box set. And the way that Linkin Park has been treating their fans when it comes to the hybrid theory and Meteora box sets is appalling. They're basically making a deluxe and a super deluxe, and they're not having the super deluxe have everything in the deluxe. In fact, they're giving the deluxe usually something that is not in the super deluxe. You would think that it would just be kind of building on itself, iterative, and you would get everything in one and some of them in another. No. What they're doing is forcing fans to purchase both the Deluxe and the Super Deluxe, despite the fact that there is crossover of material between those releases. For me, that's just kind of unfair and not nice to their fans. And the fact that this CD was a CD in one of the box sets, I think it was the Super Deluxe, and not on vinyl, and now they're making fans who already plunked down the hundreds to purchase the Super Deluxe buy another release to get this on vinyl, it just feels super cash grabby and icky to me. I don't, I don't love it. So that's the list this year for Record Store Day Black Friday. As a Record Store Day store, officially, as of a couple weeks ago, I may order a few titles for the store. I'm certainly not going to place a big order. There just isn't enough stuff that's guaranteed to sell. You know, I was going through the list and I was hoping there was a silver bullet. I was hoping there was one thing that was going to make me go, oh man, this is the item. This is what everyone wants. This is the cake box set. This is the Deja Entendu paper bag version. This is the Taylor Swift uh, lakes or, you know, long pond sessions. This is, this is the thing. And there just wasn't a thing. There wasn't one thing on this list that was like, whoa, this is a record everyone's been asking for. This has been out of print for a long time. Nothing. So again, I feel like RSD has a lot of work to do to kind of restore its former glory. I would like to make a video kind of talking about how I think that can happen. So maybe that'll happen over the next couple of weeks or months. I will say the best showing on the list so far is the label Real Gone Music. Um, I'm a huge fan of that label and most of the things they're putting out, lots of iconic and important reissues. They have like seven releases on this list and about half of them I'm unfamiliar with. So I'm excited to kind of hear them and, and see if they're worth picking up because usually their track record is pretty stellar. So I'm excited to dive into those. But like I said, please leave a comment below. Tell me if you echo my sentiments. If you disagree, I'd love to hear why. But ultimately, another RSD list review video in the can. Uh, we'll see what I pick up on actual Record Store Day Black Friday. Um, but as of now, I'm left with just an overwhelming feeling of, eh. Thanks for watching the video, guys. More coming soon. Take it easy.